Okay, I finally got it going. <laughs> Takes a while sometimes, folks. I'm really sorry about that. Um, sure glad that you're here today. Um, and we can catch up after this teaching. Um, I am continuing today in uh, teachings that have to do with the book that I wrote called Idolatry in Their Hearts. And if you look up at the top of the chat, I have put in there where you can uh, find the book, also a video promo for the book, and a, a number of the teachings from that book that are on DVD, also on ACT TV. Go check out ACT TV. I have most of that stuff there. But one of their things that they claim, and it actually comes from Catholic theologians, is that if you go back far enough in cultures, you'll find that all cultures were monotheistic at one time. <laughs> uh, that's absolutely false. Even in the ancient world, which is the world before the flood, uh, we know that uh, only a handful of people were worshiping the Lord, which was in the line of uh, Seth on through to Noah. And interestingly, they actually knew God by his name. Uh, his name is used, YHWH. In the Old Testament, if you look in the uh, Young's Literal Translation, etc., you can see that. And uh, so I, I believe they knew God's name all the way from the beginning on through uh, Abraham and on to Moses. And I believe that Moses, when he asked who was in the burning bush, he wasn't unaware of God's name. He already knew his name, but he wanted him to identify himself as to who is this? What is this? And of course, that's when he said, I am that I am. So. All of this was evidenced uh, in the line of Adam to Noah by notable characters such as Enoch. Um, however, the ancient world by and large rejected God as is evidenced by the following. Number one, many apparently had sexual relations with demons and that spawned the Nephilim. That's why he had to send the flood, one of the reasons. Genesis 6, 1 through 4, when human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, which is fallen angels, that the daughters of humans saw that the daughters of human were Hermans were beautiful and they marry, married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with humans forever for they are mortal. Their days will be uh, 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and afterwards when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and, lay, and had children by them, and they were the heroes of old men of renown. Uh, I believe some of the mythology, for instance, uh, from Greece and Rome, was loosely based on some of these heroes from the ancient world. So the Nephilim are said to have been the spawns of the Son of God, sons of God, which is actually, it's not referring to the angels in heaven, but to the fallen angels whom God created. The Nephilim were, part, were the part demonic, part human spawn of those demons and daughters of humans. So humans had already rejected God starting with Adam and Eve, and only a few in the line of Adam were faithful to him, though they did pass down the knowledge of Elohim, or YHWH. The second point is the ancient world was characterized by violence and perversion, such as will not be seen again until the end times, actually the times we're living in, and that's actually what we're seeing now, isn't it? Genesis 6, 5 through 7, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race, 
I have created. And with them, the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. And then, of course, in Luke 17, 26, we are told, just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. That's talking about the, in, uh, in the time of the tribulation leading up to the millennial kingdom of God. So mankind had rejected God all the way from the beginning in the ancient world, which was why they were condemned and destroyed by the flood. <clears throat> they rejected God in favor of demons and their own lusts. So it's quite a misnomer to state that the one true God was being worshipped in the ancient world. What about after the flood? Well, it was the line of Noah and Shem who carried on the knowledge of God. There's always a line of the true knowledge of God in the, in the world. God, so, God saw to that. And we see this through the accounts of Noah, Shem, Job, who's actually, I believe, Jobab in the line of Shem. That's Genesis 10, 29. Terah and Abraham in the Bible, which were passed down either in written form or orally, I happen to think written form, to Moses, who wrote them down for the people of Israel. However, it wasn't long after the flood that Noah's descendants, especially Ham, began to reject God and attempted to establish a one-world government known for the worship of Nimrod and his wife-slash-mother, Semiramis. Wife slash mother, hmm. This is why I propose that maybe Nimrod was a Nephilim himself. Because we know from Genesis 6 that the Nephilim were also seen after the flood. So his wife was likely his mother who had sex with a demon. Remember that God called him a mighty hunter before the Lord. And actually, there's depictions of him carved in stone from that time, found in Turkey. And they show a man approximately twice the height of normal men. That's what I base my idea on. You can uh, check that out more if you're interested in it. I have an article on Nimrod on my site, and you can read that. Now, we know of the Nephilim after the flood. Why? Because the spies sent out from Israel reported seeing the sons of Nephilim, of the Nephilim in Canaan. Oh, really? Yes, Numbers 13.33. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We, they, we seemed like grass, grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. <laughs> now, the descendants of Anak were also called the Anakim, which is the word for giant that they use these days. But it's clear that they were Nephilim. They had been spawned with sexual relationships with demons. So what did God have to do? God had to confuse the tongues of those of Babel because they had disobeyed the Lord and were staying together, worshiping a male and female as gods and building them as ziggurats so they can be close to the heavens. Why did they do that? Because they believed that Nimrod was the sun. After his death, it was said that he became the sun. And Semiramis, because they believed she was the moon. She also had another title, interestingly, Queen of Heaven. Now, this is where I believe the worship of the Queen of Heaven was stated in the Bible in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 7, 18, 44, 17 through 19, and 44, 25. Later, they continued to be worshiped under other names. In Babylon, they were under the name Marduk and Astarte. In Canaan, as Baal and Asherah. 
These were continuations of the of the worship of Nimrod Semiramis. Also, the sun god Ra in Egypt is a continuation of the worship of Nimrod. He also he also was said to have, a, have had a consort, whatever. So when God forcibly sent everyone on their way from Babel, they did not go out with the knowledge of God or YHWH. They went out with this new false religion of polytheism that they devised along with the worship of created things, which is called animism, worshiping the stars, etc. And that's what we see today in virtually all Gentile false religions based on polytheism and animism. We know that the Bible teaches that the Gentiles did not know God. And it teaches that over and over again. So that those who have tried to prove that all the cultures from the beginning have all been based on monotheism, such as William Schmidt in his Origin of the Idea of God, Don Richardson in Eternity in Their Hearts and his other books, Daniel Kikau and Perpetuated in Righteousness, and many other world Christian gathering on indigenous people, advocates, as well as emerging church, new apostolic, liberal theologians. They're all dead wrong. They need to base their findings on what the Bible says over and over about the Gentiles not knowing God instead of starting with a false, badly researched premise. How did they miss all these verses? Galatians 4, 4, 8, formerly when you did not know God, you were slaves to those by nature who by nature are not gods. 1 Corinthians 1, 21, for since in the wisdom of, wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. People need to be saved. They need to recognize who Jesus is and believe in him and commit themselves to him. First John 3, 1 says, how great is the, is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that's what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Romans 128, furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. Guess what? That's in, in particular talking about what happened at Babel. They decided, hey, yeah, God told us to spread out and procreate, but we're not going to do that. We're going to stay here. And we're going to create a new religion. Can you imagine? What a slap in the face that was to God. 1 Thessalonians 4, 5, do not, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Maybe one of the strongest passages, Ephesians 2, 12 through 13. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. If you're not believing in YHWH, you are without hope and without God. You don't have God. Finally, the punishment is, 2 Thessalonians 1.8, he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. And yet we have many people out there trying to justify all the cultures of the world, like I talked about last week, putting them on an equal footing with Israel, to whom God exclusively revealed himself by name. I am that I am. These ideas from Richardson et al., basically constitute radical replacement theology on steroids. That's because they're trying to make all Gentile cultures into their own separate trees. 
when the Bible says that any true believer is a branch off the tree of Israel. Romans 11, 17 through 18. If some of the branches have been broken off and you, though, uh, though a wild shoot, olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. This is why they're saying all oh, those those evil missionaries came here and presented a foreign God to us. Yeah. God was foreign to you. The teachings of the World Christian Gathering of Indigenous People and others are creating a new world order that is a demonic lie. And those who follow them end up worshiping false gods. Even Bible translation societies have followed this paradigm and have placed the names of foreign gods in the Bibles of various languages. Check out my article called Blasphemizing the Bible, which is both on my site and in video form on ACT TV. The truth is that man has rejected God from the beginning. And after Babel took false religion to the four corners of the globe. Now I want to just read to you a partial list of some of the oldest cultures after the flood, which all had a male and female deity at the apex of their pantheon of gods. Remember, God is not a male and female. God is one God eternally existent in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He didn't need a female God to then spawn a whole bunch of other gods. But that's what all these cultures are about. Let's look at it. Babylon had Marduk and Astarte, which is said to be a continued worship of Nimrod and Semiramis. Now, if you go look up this article or you get the book, I actually have the uh, web links for the for where I got all the this information from. You can look it look it up for yourself. The Anunnaki had Elil and Ishtar, and related again to Babylon. Canaan or the Ugartic had Baal and Asherah. The Sumerians had An and Ki. The Hittites had Kum, Kumarbi and Hanahanas. The Egyptians had Amen and Mut. By the way, the God is clear in the Bible that he was going to punish those who worship Amen. Persia had Ahura Mazda and Spenta Armaiti, or the earth goddess. Mesopotamia had Enlil and Ninlil. Nineveh had El and Athirat. Hurrian had Teshub and Hebat. Lydian had Baal and Anat. India had Vishnu and Shiva. Armenia had Aramaza, Aramaz and An Anahit. Pre Islamic Arabia had Hubal and Manat. Osetian had Huikau and Satana. The Berbers had Isis and Set. The Greeks had Zeus and Hera. Ju uh, Romans had Jupiter and Juno. Celtic, Celtics had Rosmerta and Mercury, or there's a whole bunch of other ones that were together, male and female. China had Nuwa and Fuxi. Japan had Izanagi and Izanami. Korea had Chunji Wang and Queen Baji. The Aztecs had Toki and Tlatsitiotl. The Maori had Pahurangi and Tango Tango. By the way, there's no mention of Io at all. Uh, 
which Hawaii imported and said that was the god they were worshiping. But guess what? They weren't worshiping that god at all. They were worshiping Kane and Nawahine. Actually, Keawe became both Kane, who was a male god, and Nawahine, a female god. Ooh, we split. <laughs> You know what? I could cite many more at this point, but you get the point. So the conclusion is this. This puts the matter to rest about the claims that the religions of the world have always been monotheistic the further back in time you go. That is absolute hogwash, people. People who make these claims need to learn from anthropology, archaeology, and especially from the Bible, that's the place where you really learn about it. So I want to thank uh, those who have joined us on YouTube today. I hope this has been good information for you. And come back next week. We'll have more on uh, sort of on the subject of renewing your mind. In other words, not 